Anybody who has read my titles, read my descriptions, read my thumbnails, anywhere that I write text, probably realizes one thing about me, and that is that my grammar and my spelling is kinda horrible. It's not unreadably bad, but it's pretty bad. Uh, and today we're looking at a tool that will hopefully help me fix that, and that tool is called Grammar. Not by helping me improve my grammar or learn how to spell properly, nope, just um, letting me avoid the problem entirely. Have you ever used uh, Grammarly? This is basically a terminal application that connects to a open source software that does the same thing as Grammarly. So there are two main ways we can use grammar. The first way is the check command, the second way is the listen command. So I went and grabbed one of the assignments that I wrote last year, or year before, when, when did I go to, I don't know, whenever I was at uni, and we're going to be using the check command. So the check command is for checking a file. So that is just called assignment... Uh, dot md, and there's a reason why I'm using a markdown file, and that's because this actually does properly support markdown and won't consider the markdown elements, you know, mistakes in the document. Now, sometimes it might take a while to actually connect to the API, and right now it's taking way longer than I've ever seen. Yeah, I guess that was just my internet dying. I, it's working fine now. I don't know what happened there. Anyway, 218 mistakes. For the record, I got... I think like a 95 on this assignment, so yeah. Anyway, as we can see, it's going to show the context around the sentence because in some cases, it may not actually be a mistake. It may be something you intend to do. In this case, it seems like, no, this actually was a mistake, and it's probably going to be like that for a lot of them. This one, actually. So, I was actually embedding some LaTeX in this document, and this is being shown as a mistake in this case. No, that's perfectly fine. I'm going to leave it as it is. And as we have each of the things we can go through, it's going to give you a couple of options for things you may want to do. So, generally, what you're going to see is fix, custom fix, ignore, and next. On some of them, though, like this one here where there is a word, you can actually go and add it to your dictionary. But when there is a word, it's going to give you a couple of options for what it may actually be. So the mistake, at least the mistake it's saying, is a priori. And the suggested fixes are prior, priori, priors, a priorist, and a priorism. But in this case, I know this word actually is correct. I'm going to add it to my global dictionary and move to the next one. And then you'll go through that process until you get to the end. Now, because I don't want to be here literally forever, I'm just going to show you the second command because the final screen is exactly the same. Let's go do grammar listen, and this is going to listen for a string. So in this case, let's go and pass in hello, and let's spell world wrong. In this case, there should be two mistakes. So the first one is hello doesn't have a capital, so let's go and fix that. And then world, it's actually not giving us the correct suggestion. In this case, it only has wood. So not every situation it's going to be able to fix it for you. In some cases, you may have to do a custom fix, but it does do a fairly good job at working out there is some sort of problem here. I'm going to change this to world, and then we have the option to save as, which will let you save it to a file or print it to the screen. I'm just going to print it to the screen, and that's the final result. Now, the interactive prompt is great and all, but sometimes you may not want to go through it, and you may want to just fix it by yourself. In which case, what you can do is pass in the dash P option, and then it's just going to dump out all of the mistakes directly to your window. And of course, it's going to be slow for that one. As you can see, now we have a lot of things to go through, and it's all 200 and whatever it was that was available. And apparently, if you run that and there's a new update available, it will tell you. Now, when it comes to supported formats, obviously all forms of plain text will technically work. But if you're using something like LaTeX or Trough or Graph or any of the other formatters out there besides Markdown and unformatted plain text, you're going to have a lot of false positives. Not to say you can't use it, you just have to keep that in mind. Before we look at the rest of the features, I just need to mention there is actually a file size limit. So I had to go and delete most of the file to actually get it working in that, but if we go and run it again without those changes in there, it's going to try to connect, 
And then once it connects, it's going to say, hey, there is more than 75,000 bytes. So there is a limit, but for most documents, it's going to be fine. And there is actually a way to get around that a bit later, but... I'll mention that towards the end. Now, where is one place that you write a lot of text that you don't want there to be mistakes in? If you guessed inside of a Git repo, you were absolutely correct. So this actually has this really interesting way of doing Git integration. So if we just run the help page, there is this grammar hook and also grammar commit. So grammar commit is basically just going to be a shortcut for doing git commit dash m and then doing a grammar check. But git hook is going to make it so regardless of how you actually commit, it's going to go and properly do the grammar check. So let's go into one of my repos. I believe I set this up beforehand in my website repo. So let's just go to that one. Now, all you need to do to set the hook up is run grammar hook. Now, as I mentioned, I'd already set it up, so let's go and reset that. And if we go and actually make a modification, let's just make a modification to some random file. This one here, and we delete a line. So if we then go and do a git commit, actually git add, sorry, git add, git commit. If we then go and say, this is a commit with a mistake. Go and save this. What it's going to do is then connect to the API and try to fix what you actually wrote. Now, I thought for a second that the correction wasn't actually going to be in there, but the fix for that one is going to be number three. Let's select that one. And then this one is mistake. Let's press one on that. And then it's going to go and commit it like it normally would. That was actually supposed to be fix number two, not fix number three. Um, that's my bad. I just can't read. Now, if you use grammar commit instead, you don't actually need the hook enabled. The hook is there just for the regular git commands. But I wouldn't recommend using grammar commit because I'm not a big fan of just always using git commit dash m. Sometimes you want to have an expanded message, which is the way you probably should be doing it. Now, you may have spotted the inside of the help menu before, but there is actually a bunch of other stuff that we can go and set. Now, all of the options in here for the most part, are going to be configuration options. And because the developer actually has a brain and helps you out with this, it tells you what the default value is here and also what the data type actually is in places where it's not entirely obvious. Now, something like, you know, print. Sure, it's obvious if you've worked with a lot of terminal applications, that probably should be a Boolean. But having that there is honestly really nice to see. Now, I don't know why it's there for help, because just running the option is going to show it, but besides that, for things like, say, the language and things like that, it is really useful. So there's going to be two ways we can set the options. One of those is by doing it through the application. The other way is just modifying the config file. So if we want to do it through the application, that is going to be done by using grammar, config, then the name of the key. So the key name is going to be the full option name minus the dashes. So let's go and set the language and then let's set the value to be uh, auto. So it automatically detects what language it's actually working with. I don't know how well that actually works. Now it's going to say, hey, uh, local config not found. Should I use the global config instead? Uh, I haven't actually made a local one. I'm going to say yes. And now it's going to go and modify that global config. But let's go and look at the local config. If you don't have one that already exists, obviously you can just go and download it from the website. Or you could go and run grammar init. And this will prompt you for the kind of configuration you actually want. So I could go and download the default configuration from languagetool.org. Or I could go and copy over the global configuration and use those settings. Now, if you haven't made any modifications, these are going to basically just be the exact same option. I'm going to download the default configuration so we can go and look at that one. Now, I have one problem with the configuration, and that is where it puts it. So, like a lot of applications, it's in the home directory. But setting everything in here is pretty straightforward. It's just a JSON file. So check the data types you actually need to use and what the keys are actually called. And it's pretty easy to work out 
what needs to be said in here. Now, the API URL and the API key is incredibly important. So I mentioned this is connecting to a service that does all of the Grammarly-like stuff for you, but this can actually be self-hosted as well. This right here is the website for language tool, which also happens to be where the main API is being hosted. Now, if you're using this main instance, if you want to have a much larger amount of characters you can work with, there is also a premium account. Now, this is uh, $6.66 in Australia. I don't know. The US price is probably like $4 a month? I don't know. Whatever, you work it out for yourself. Just come to the website. And now you get 100,000 characters in the character field that per request. Plus, it'll give you suggestions for improving the style and tone of the document. And when you do that, you get access to an API key and then make sure you put the API key inside of the uh, config file that we saw before. But if you have no interest in paying someone else to go and set this up for you, what you can do is go over to the GitHub and then go and self-host it. Now, this is written in Java, so, you know, it's going to run on anything you want it to run on. It's also licensed under... LGPL. So if you only care about free software, that is also nice to see as well. I have not tested the self-hosting myself, but there is a couple of instructions in here on how to actually do it. So whether you want to go and do the script installation, or there is also a Docker container, that would probably be the easiest way to do it. But if you want to make any modifications to it yourself, then going and probably, you know, doing it through this method and just pointing it to a different location is probably the best bet you can go with. As you probably spotted earlier, there is also a bunch of other languages supported. I can't really speak for the quality of basically anything in here, but if you are not a native English speaker and you want to use it for some other language, there may still be some use actually here for you. I think this is a pretty cool tool, and now that I've said that it exists, uh, I'm probably going to get bugged every single time I make a mistake being like, Hey Brody, you know you did a video on a tool that lets you fix your grammar and your spelling, so why haven't you used it in this video? Um, I'm lazy. If there are mistakes in the description for this video, that's probably why. I will, you know what, I'll run this description through grammar just to make sure that I haven't got any mistakes in this one. Whether it happens in future ones, well... I can't really promise anything now, can I? So if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, I don't know where I was going to point there, go to my Patreon subscribers only bearer pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays where I live stream twice a week, upload about five or so YouTube shorts, and this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out. <laughs>